when most people are in crisis, they usually just try and normalize it, muddle through, and try and make everybody else feel okay and comfortable. You know, they think about others a lot. And on a collective level, there's a lot of people in crisis. And it's not that they don't know they're in crisis, they just don't want to address that they're in crisis. So they repress it and deny it. And we have many different coping mechanisms for that. Certain behaviours change, people withdraw, they drink more, they sleep longer, they eat more. There's certain coping mechanisms. Now, a very small percentage of people, when they're actually diagnosed, will work with me because they're able to and know that they need to address whatever is the underlying emotional contributor. There is another percentage that's higher that know what the emotional contributor is, but they just need a beat. They need to just catch their breath. They need to keep everything normal and pretend that everything's normal. And then once that's, I'm okay, I'm okay, then they'll be able to look at stuff. So they need a little bit of distance afterwards. Um. Oh. Now, there are those, so you have the people that want to tackle it while it's happening. And they usually know they just need to get rid of it because it's going to take them down. And it's scary and it's raw while you're in it, uh, but they know that they have to look at it. Other people need a little bit of time and then they'll look at it. Other people need a week, I, I mean a year, on the other side of a trauma, a crisis, a happening, a disaster, to be able to be like, wow, yeah, that was really, really a tough time for me. I was scared, I lost my job, and are able to then process it. Other people need five to ten years. Some people become agoraphobic. And then they say, yeah, there was this thing that happened in 2020, and I didn't like to go out after that. <laughs> I know. But then 20 years goes by. <laughs> So, I'm saying this not just for yourselves, but for the people around you. Everybody has their own temperature where they're cooked. Where they're like, I need, a, I need to do a workshop, I need to do some breath, I need to like, collapse this anxiety, I need to... And there's other people that just will go to their practice and they'll breathe through it and they'll get through it. And some people need to wait a little. And you will see some people go for a drink, drink a little bit more than they normally drink, be a little bit more snappy, be a little bit more... Um, some people will forget to take their medications, especially through the winter. Uh, 
And I want you to be aware that everybody has different um, temperaments. You know, I only work with people that are ready to go there. I don't force someone to go there. There's an actual process before we even do the session so that they're clear where we're going. There's no, I'm not going to surprise you. So I want you to really pull back from imposing um, your way on somebody else because everybody's going to have their own way of dealing with this through the fall and through the winter. And it might not be the way that you would deal with it. You need to be in your own lane. And just hold that space for them by doing you. And letting them be inspired by you or maybe even shut down from you. Um, Because as I said, everybody has different temperaments. Some people will wait till six months after this is finished to be able to look at it and process it. Other people will be a couple of years, other people will be five years, other people will be 10 years. But I've worked with enough people who, when something is happening, It is a very small percentage that will actually look and excavate the actual real, raw, gnarly stuff. And we have to be patient and know that everybody has their own temperature and to be kind and considerate that not everybody has tools. Not everybody knows how to meditate. Not everybody um, Um. understands that their their thinking is Ah. Ah. creating these things. Look, this is what he wants. (laughs) This is what he wants. Now you've got it. So I wanted to share that with you. And uh, not to get too rattled by people around you who are maybe taking a little longer or using a little bit more red wine or white wine at dinner or having a little bit more of a daytime drink because they've got the kids and all sorts of stuff. I'm not saying it's right, but everybody manages and copes with things. This is not new for human beings. Alcohol sales is 1,200% up. Human beings have been pain, uh, uh, numbing pain for a very, very long time. From lithium to alcohol. My God, Noah, the first thing Noah did when he came off the ark was he planted his vines. (laughs) So, be, um, be compassionate. Be considerate. If you can send energy to people, do that. You know, um, check in with folks. Because everybody deals with a situation, a temporary condition, a crisis. This is also traumatic for a lot of people who have lost their jobs, lost their businesses. And... um, They may not be ready to, oh, let's look at that. (laughs) 
that I sometimes can take people years. And I want us to be able to honour and respect that, but also let people know, hey, you know, there's things that can help you, and I'm here, or um, there's resources. But people will resist what is pushed upon them. So I wanted to share that with you. Hope it's helpful. And I will speak to you soon. So just learn to be. And uh, like send me any messages if you feel that you know or have an inkling what you think that you'll need during the, the fall and the winter. Because we're not that far away from the winter solstice. It's the 21st of December. Of... um what road maps that you think you'll need and um, what you think is lacking um, and I will speak to you soon take care, bye don't get the newsletter